Hey, welcome back to another tutorial. We're in part two in this ASP.NET web application. We're trying to create a appointment and then we're going to validate the data. So if you forget to put something in or you put it in incorrectly, you will get these error messages before the program moves on. So that's ahead, data validation. So in the next few minutes, let's create some a code that will allow the user to put in a date with a date picker, as well as validate that we have the correct currency format listed here. So in the previous video in this series, we created a model for an appointment. And you can see that we have a patient's name and we have the date. Let's fix something with a date here. I'm going to select the word data in square brackets. And what I'm looking for is data type. Now, in parentheses, I tell it what kind of data type it is. If you type in the word data type with a period, you can see that there are all kinds of data types that we're expecting. And the one that would make sense here is date. So let's select date and run the program. Now, the difference you can see right away is that there is a date picker here. So if I pick the arrow and select a number, it automatically selects a value from the calendar. And it will not let me uh, edit this manually. So that date format and the date validation has already done quite a bit of work for us. So the next item that we're going to change is the uh, customer's net worth. So this data type is going to be currency. So data type dot CU brings up a bunch of things and currency is the one I'm choosing. So that will allow me to put in only a number. So now I have this question about how much money do you have? And I just put in here the word a lot. And when I press tab, it says here, you must enter a number. So it won't accept any kind of uh, text here. Let's go down into the uh, number down at the bottom here where it says your pain level. So what I'm looking for on this guy is a range. So let's put in a range and allow the number from one to 10 to be accepted. So let's see what that does. So let's go to the range here of the dates. Let's put in a 55 and tab, and you can see that it will not accept this value because it says only numbers from one to 10 are allowed. For some reason, the rules say that a person's name has to be at least four letters long and no more than 20. So I want to put in the maximum length of a string as 20. So string length, parentheses 20, will give me the maximum. As an optional par parameter, I can put a comma and then th write the word minimum length and put an equal sign for the number for minimum. So let's say four. So if I try to put in my name just as SH, I get the message that says four is the, ma the minimum. So I put in Shad and Tab and it likes that one. However, if I try to put in my full title, which is Shad Sluter, the Duke of Sweden, then it will not accept it because 20 characters is the maximum. So let's change another option. So down here in the doctor's name, we're asking a lot of our patients, what is the name of the doctor? And we're asking them to require that. I have no idea who I'm going to see. I just am sick and I need to see a doctor. So let's take off the required name. And by default, let's give them a person. So let's do an equal sign after the doctor's last name and make something up. So for the default doctor, let's make them see Dr. Shivago. And uh, if they don't put anything in, this will become the value of the doctor. So I think we've reached the point now where we have validated all the input. So if we put in somebody's name, we pick a date, and we leave the doctor empty, we can probably accept the form input. So let's see, I've got all those filled in and choose create. And nothing really happens. It just returned me to this same page. Why is that? So I'm going to right click and choose inspect. Let's go find out where the form input is going. So the form action, as you can see, is just a slash. So I haven't defined the action of what this form is supposed to do. So it just redisplays on the exact same screen that it showed at the very beginning. And it pretty much loses all of the data that was in the form. So let's fix that. So in the next part of our video, we're going to add some uh, a reply. So we will accept the data, we will store it, and then display it on another form, a display form, rather than a data input form. So that's coming right up. 